Welcome everybody. My name is Sammy Caps. Welcome. Today we're going to explore and look behind the story of Last Epoch's launch. We have now heard an official statement from 11th Hour Games regarding their post-launch analysis. They've given us a breakdown of what transpired before launch, during launch, and the critical four or five days into the launch what problems they faced, how they fixed it, and what they're going to be doing in the future to alleviate these kind of problems. In this video, I'm going to give you my non-technical explanation and how I see and interpret what they communicated to us. So I hope you'll join me and stick around. We'll see you on the other side. Okay, so first things first, let's discuss a simplified version of how online games work. And I'll try to do my best to explain it in a simplified fashion. Imagine entering an online game as walking through a series of doors. Each door represents a service that checks your tickets. So for example, when we log in, there's a check. Now, the person that is checking your ticket also, there is a guide that takes you to your seat. And that process we could classify as the game data. And then finally drops you into the action. And that's the game server. So Last Epoch relies on a backstage crew, that's the backend services, to keep these doors working smoothly. The game was designed to open more doors, scale up, as more players arrived, ensuring everyone could get through quickly. Okay, so now that I've explained, hopefully, in a simplified manner, how online games work, well, what went wrong then? So, despite thorough preparations from 11th Hour Games, the team encountered unforeseen problems, and they are the following. Number one, the door system that I explained earlier. So the serving server matching service wouldn't open as many doors as needed. So as more players were coming on, they weren't opening more doors. The, this is related to the server matching service. Then a last minute issue with their service provider compounded the problem, hampering the team's ability to make quick fixes. Now this, caused a domino effect. So these initial hiccups triggered a cascade of issues where failing to get through one door caused delays and problems at the next, creating a bottleneck. The team worked around the clock implementing emergency fixes and manually adjusting systems to get things back on track. Now, while they were doing these emergency fixes, they kind of saw a turning of the corner. And after several days of firefighting, the team identified and fixed a crucial bottleneck in the system that checked if players were in a party. This fix significantly improved stability, allowing the game to handle the influx of players more efficiently. That's why we were all getting those party error issues. So what did 11th Hour Games learn from this problem? They learned that they need more robust and flexible deployment tools, the importance of designing services that can be quickly adjusted without a full redeploy, a deeper understanding of how player behavior during stress time affects their systems. Well, hopefully I explained it in the most non-technical way and basic way of explaining it. Look, this is a lot more complicated than what I'm describing, but I try, I kind of wanted to make a, a simple of an analogy as possible regarding the door system, and hopefully it made sense. And look, this sounded like after reading this developer blog, uh, from EHG on the post analysis of the disastrous launch. It looks like they also were a little bit unlucky from some of their service providers, specifically their service host, which had an incident the night before and was still ongoing during launch, which prevented them from 
deploying quick fixes and they had to revert to doing it manually. And I can only imagine the stress that would have deployed on the team where, you know, you go from being able to rely on your service host to implement changes right away to having to do it manually. I can only imagine the amount of workload that throws and the monkey wrench that's thrown into this process. I can only imagine. Um, however, they're not to blame either. And at the end of the day, it really shows you, shows me also how complicated and what we take for granted. These games, we take it for granted. You know, we just log in and everything's works smoothly, but there's a lot of work and detail that goes behind the scenes. And the fact that at the end of the day, when you take all the communication from this developer blog on what happened, it literally, and again, I know there is other things too that impacted it. Like I said, the service host that they uh, deployed and utilized uh, for their backend services, they had an incident. So that didn't help the situation. But at the end of the day, this looks like it came down to one line of code that they thought was robust. Uh, but after further analysis, it was the bottleneck. It was the problem. Um, now they have since fixed it, but it just goes to show you how critical all this stuff is in deploying a game of this stature. Um, anyway, I just hopefully did a not a so so bad in trying to explain the non-technical version and to be honest with you i don't want to get into the technical stuff but i wanted to make this video number one to hopefully try to explain it but number two more importantly just the transparency from 11th hour games is just phenomenal this developer blog on the launch retrospective is unbelievable they have given such a in-depth behind the scenes look really being a hundred percent transparent with us and not holding anything back pointing the finger at themselves to be honest with you when in fact they could also have pointed the finger at their service host provider uh, but they didn't the, the they put put the finger on them and they shared with us exactly what happened and kudos to them um, for sharing this information with us it really at least for me helps explain what happened and i'm confident that moving forward they're going to be better for it uh, so for that i'm grateful that they shared this with us because it really shows their transparency on communicating and keeping us posted that kind of strategy methodology from a uh, a developer of a game is so refreshing and it makes me even more positive that these developers 11th hour games are going to continue to build on this game and it also cements the fact that you couple this with the fact that we already know they take player feedback seriously because there's been a lot of feedback that's been implemented in the game because of you and the players that play 11th hour games. So um, nothing but uh, unbelievable praise for this development team, for the transparency and the constant communication. I said this in another video that I did on this topic, and I'll say it again. During the disastrous launch, launch day, and for the next 72 hours, we were constantly being told what was going on. And actually the first day we were literally getting 15, 20 minute updates from the development team. It was unbelievable. I've never seen this kind of communication from a development team. At least I haven't, maybe you have. Uh, so just kudos to them. Anyway, this was a very, um, very enlightening post from them. And I'm glad that they, they said they were going to do this and they straight, they stayed true to form, and we now have the explanation and the retrospective of what happened. Um, look, I'm sure they would have loved to have taken back that launch and done it right the first time. You only get one 
uh, impression when it comes to launching a full release game. And unfortunately, they're always going to be known for having a disastrous launch of their game. But the good news for 11th Hour Games and the good news for the players that play it, like myself, this is a studio that is honest, transparent, and at the end of the day, their number one priority is to make a game that's fun and enjoyable for their players. And I can tell you, having played this game since February 21st, nonstop, and in my live streams, players coming in that are playing it, the feedback I've received, I've experienced, has been nothing but stellar. Everybody's having fun, everybody's enjoying the game, and that, at the end of the day, is what is most important. Anyway, I would love to hear your comments and feedback on have you read the launch retrospective from 11th Hour Games? What do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts on the topic. And for you technical guys, if you can jump on in after you've read it, let me know. Um, how was my explanation? Was it confusing? Did it make any sense? Um, hopefully it did. Um, anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts. Get them, in, get them in on the comments section of the video. And if you could like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And as always, hope to see you next time. Take care, everybody. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.